Okay, so a few terms and definitions, because there's kind of a few loose ends that we want to um, to look at. There is another form of wave, which is not a um, not a repeating wave, and that is a pulse. So when I drew the, um, the went through the explanation of what causes the wave motion and what causes the disturbance, I drew what I was drawing for you in that case was a um, a single pulse. So if you look at what a, a pulse looks like, it would look something like this. So here's the string, and what you would see is one hill or one crest, and that's it. So this guy has some of the properties that the other waves have, but then other properties it doesn't have. So one of the properties they would have is that it does have amplitude of course so there is some maximum displacement above what would be the normal remember that's from the equilibrium position so it would be the distance from where the the string would normally be to its maximum displacement um, but there are certain things that it does not have so we'll make two columns does not have and has We'll separate these two guys. So for one thing it does not have is there is no period to its motion. It does not repeat itself. So in the case of the traveling wave, so in the case of the traveling wave, it keeps repeating itself. So this crest that we're looking at right here will move to the right, and this location, what will eventually happen is this crest will move to the right, move to the right, until eventually it arrives at the same place where this crest currently is. And as it does that, there will take some period of time, and that is referred to as the, the period of the wave. The amount of time that it takes for the wave, for one full wave to pass by, if you're standing and watching the wave, if you're watching from the side, the amount of time it takes for one full wave to pass by you, that's the period of the wave. But this one doesn't have any, any counterpart. There is no other portion that's going to show up. So this guy does not have the property known as the period. Now, because it does not have a property known as the period, it also does not have this second property, which is the frequency. So the frequency is the number of full waves that pass you per second. But of course, a pulse would always be one. And since there's no repeating, there's really, it doesn't even make sense to even talk about the frequency. There's just simply one wave. It's not one wave per second. It's just one wave per for all the time that, you, that you're watching. So there is no period and there is no frequency. Again, because there is no repeating, no repeating motion. Um, if you look at the wavelength, well the wavelength is the length of one full wave and it might seem like this is one full wave, but the way I would measure it normally is I would go from one crest to the next successive crest, but there is no successive crest. So there really is nothing uh, that corresponds to the wavelength. There is no wavelength to this guy. So those are things that it does not have that all the traveling waves that we've been talking about, the transverse wave, the longitudinal wave, all these waves, they have these properties. They have period, they have frequency, they have wavelength, um, but the pulse does not. What a pulse does have is it does have amplitude, as we pointed out. And while it does not have any course, thing that corresponds to the wavelength, it, it does have a width. And that width can, can vary. So if you make a very quick pulse, you'll probably get a very narrow pulse. If you go very slowly, move your hand up and down, then you're gonna get a much broader, much wider um, pulse. So the pulse does have the amplitude and the width, but it doesn't have a lot of the other properties that we've been talk, that we'll talk about now, um, that the repeating waves have, the period, the frequency, or the, the wavelength. So let's, let's just look real quickly at some of these different properties and just, just kind of clarify them a little bit. The property called the period is symbolized by the letter capital T, and it is basically the number of seconds, the number of seconds per one full cycle. One full wave is one full cycle of the oscillation of the, of the medium. So it's the number of seconds per cycle. But the thing about it is, is that they don't consider cycles to be a unit, right? Because cycles is just a counter. It's not like seconds or meters or kelvins. It's not something that you measure with a device. It's just simply you count. You count how many there are. 
So the number of seconds for one full cycle is going to boil down to just simply seconds. It will simply be seconds. These are the units for the, the period. Okay, the frequency is exactly the inverse of what the period is. It is the number of full waves or cycles per unit time. So that would be per second. So again, you, you can see that it is clearly the inverse of this guy. Now, here's the, the problem. The frequency, um, this portion of the frequency, which is the cycles, is not considered a unit because, again, it's just a counter. It's not considered to have units. You would say 12 cycles or 6 cycles, but it's, it, that's not really like the, the units for the number because it's not something that you measure. So, um, as a result, we don't write anything for cycle just like we did up here. Cycles per second just turned into seconds. Now, this is going to go away also, but it leaves the seconds, but the seconds are on the bottom. So, this is going to turn into inverse seconds, inverse seconds, the inverse of the of the period, and um, that is what is called a hertz. So one hertz is one cycle per second. A hundred hertz is a hundred cycles per second. A thousand hertz is a thousand cycles per second, or a thousand full waves per second is the definition of the hertz. So I do want to give an equation that relates the period and the frequency, and it's, it's pretty simple. Frequency is symbolized by the letter lowercase f, and we could calculate lowercase f by just simply taking the inverse of the of the period. So whatever the, the period is, I just flip it over and I get the, the frequency. And then vice versa. I can go back and forth. These two guys are interchangeable. I can move the period up here and the frequency down here. It's the same, the same formula. So I can calculate um, either one of them. So the um, wavelength is the length of one full wave. Right, that's like a simple definition, but it is really important that you think about how you, how, like, how do you actually measure it? Its symbol is the Greek letter lambda, um, the Greek letter L, basically. Um, and the way that it would be measured, I'm going to draw a wave right here. And we'll draw the equilibrium position. So the way that I would measure it is I would go from one successive point to the next successive, or I could say the next consecutive identical point. So from one crest to the next, but not just crest to crest. You can't just say crest to crest, because that could be from this crest to the crest way over here. And that's not a wavelength. That would be two wavelengths. So it is the distance between one crest and the next successive crest. Or I could also do, I could do from trough to trough. Or I could even do this. I could go from the equilibrium position to the next successive identical equilibrium position. Here the two positions are identical, both at equilibrium and ascending or rising. So you can measure the, the wavelength any, any way that you want to, so long as it is from one location on the wave to the next successive um, position. And, and it would typically be measured in centimeters or, or meters. Um, lastly, then, is the displacement. And I'll draw again one more wave. And you can look at it either place. You can look at a crest and come up with the amplitude, or you can look at a trough and come up with the amplitude. But one thing that's really important about that is that it's you don't double it. So exam for example, this from here to here is not the amplitude. That's not the amplitude. It's twice the amplitude. Really important is that the amplitude is the maximum displacement of the medium from equilibrium. The maximum displacement of the medium from the equilibrium position, not from the maximum negative to the maximum positive, but from equilibrium to the to the maximum look uh, maximum displacement. So last thing, and the amplitude of course is is symbolized by the capital letter A. Um, wave velocity, of course, is just symbolized by the letter V. It doesn't. There's no special label for wave velocity. Wave velocity is just a, a velocity like any other 
Um, but there are things to connect together. So before we, we um, sort of put together a, an equation that it uses some of these wave properties um, in a way to calculate the wave velocity, I just want to point out that you, you want to be careful not to confuse the wave velocity with the velocity of the medium. So the wave velocity will be a constant value. It, it will travel with constant velocity, and as a result, we're going to use the equation that V is equal to D divided by T. Right, so one of the first equations that we looked at when we started um, started physics back in uh, kinematics. It's different, however, from the velocity of the medium because if you remember the velocity of the medium, the medium is basically a simple harmonic oscillator. So it goes back and forth. So if you want to look at the velocity of the object with respect to time, the same way that I'm doing right now, I'm looking at the velocity of this thing with respect to time, then the velocity is going to be some some trig function, either sine or cosine. Um, and so you'll have some maximum velocity times either the sine or cosine, depending on which phase that the thing was in when you when you started. So the velocity of the medium varies like a lot. It can go from zero to some maximum positive value and down to some maximum negative value. So up here, it moves basically not at all. It's very slow when it reaches up at the top at the crest. And as it begins to come down, it goes faster and faster and faster. It reaches its fastest point at equilibrium. Then it overshoots. Now the force flips direction. And now the force, instead of pulling down on it, now the force pulls up on it. So as it overshoots and moves down here, it slows to a stop. And then eventually, because the force is pulling upward on it, it begins to move back in the upward direction, where it again goes faster and faster and faster until reaching its fastest speed here at equilibrium. So the medium or the... the um, a small portion of the medium is executing simple harmonic motion so it's following that sinusoidal or they're using that cosine function to describe its motion and the the velocity is fluctuating a lot but when we talk about the wave velocity it won't be like that this guy will have a constant velocity and we'll just use the formula v equals d over t it's not a function of its position or its displacement um, at all however we want to um, somehow be able to derive a new formula for wave velocity that incorporates some of the wave properties like period or frequency or or the wavelength so if instead of just using any random distance which i could totally do i, I could completely use any distance i could see a wave coming in from the ocean and i could put two sticks out in the water and measure the distance between those two sticks and just watch waves as they come in and when the wave arrives at the first stick i start my stopwatch and when the wave passes the second stick i stop the stopwatch and if i know the distance between those two i can do this i can use v equals d over t and it's really important even though we're going to derive a new equation that you remember that you can still use that equation so every time you see a problem with wave velocity you shouldn't automatically assume that you must have to use the wave equation in order to come up with the the solution to the problem if you have either d or t or v any combination of two of these three things then of course you can figure out the other one by just simply using the v equals d over t equation but if we assume that the distance that we're going to choose is the wavelength because that's that's the wave the amount of time that it takes for a wave to move one full wavelength in other words this wave will move to the right move to the right move to the right until eventually it's exactly where this portion of the wave is at so this guy will slide to the right and eventually he'll be exactly where this portion of the wave is and how far will he have moved when that occurs he will have moved exactly one full wavelength now the definition of the period of a wave is the amount of time it takes for one full wave to pass so if you imagine standing right here and watching this wave as it passes by you would see the wave slowly move to the right and in, in an amount of time that is equal to its period it will move over exactly one full wavelength it will move over its own width the own width the wavelength in exactly one um, period so if I used as the distance the wavelength then that means the amount of time that's going to take that wavelength to move over is going to be exactly equal to the period so I can I've derived the new formula which allows me to calculate the velocity of a wave based on the properties of the wave which is wavelength and period but just to remind you we have a second um, equation and that second equation relates the frequency of the wave and that is that frequency is equal to 1 over t and I actually have 1 over t when I put lambda over t I have 1 over t so I could replace the 1 over t with f 
and that will give me a new formula, and this will be our final version of the formula. So v is equal to lambda over t, or v is also equal to lambda f. So this is a new equation that we can use for solving um, problems that involve the velocity of waves based on the properties of the wave, the wavelength, the period, or the frequency. We won't use the amplitude though. The amplitude might be helpful for me to get the velocity of the medium, the simple harmonic motion portion of it, but it's not going to allow me to come up with the velocity of the, of the wave. So we'll stick with this for, the, for calculating the velocity of the wave.